Thank you for rejoining us on Planet Earth, our loving home for vegan, the fastest way to a cooler planet, an exploration of factors driving climate change and how we can quickly address the situation. Yes, certainly we are threatening sustainability in the long run. Climate change is making fundamental changes to part of the system that we are totally dependent on. I am talking about ecosystems, both on land, terrestrial ecosystems, and also in the ocean, marine ecosystems. We are melting glaciers, which will affect the water supply to billions and billions of people, which will have to move because people don't live where there are no water. So we are creating or making a setup for social conflict on a grandiose scale. So very much threatening the sustainability of the globe. I have to say that some ecosystems are going to be impacted in a very serious way very soon and we have to do all what we can to curb climate change in order to avoid such huge damages which will put at risk our well-being, the well-being of humans. So who wants to take this kind of gamble with a laboratory called Earth? This is a gamble we cannot afford to lose. Yeah, we're really running out of time. In fact, I think this next year or two years are the critical time period. I certainly think unless we turn off the taps tomorrow, the world is going to continue to, to warm. We don't want that warming to run away, and so we have to do something about it. It will require changes in all of the greenhouse gases. There are about six. Methane is one, CO2 another, nitrous oxide, and some others. We know that short-lived carbon forcers like methane, black carbon, and tropospheric ozone contribute significantly to the warming of the Arctic. And because they are short-lived, they also give us an opportunity to make rapid progress if we work to limit them. Some 25 years ago, when the first IPCC report was done and the first meeting was held in Rio, the Earth Summit, climate change seemed very far away. And the big actor in the long term, of course, is carbon dioxide. But now that climate change is much more upon us and we're already seeing major impacts ecological impacts, particularly melting of glaciers, and the sea ice disappearing and, and so on, we're realizing that we, it's not so far away and that we have to think about the immediate term as well as the long term. The science has also progressed substantially and we understand now that there are some shorter lived pollutants, greenhouse pollutants, that have an effect on climate in the shorter term. It's certainly true that in the long term we have to deal with carbon dioxide, but in fact, when I think about it for myself, the only way I can have an impact on the planet's warming in my lifetime is to deal with these shorter term things. Anything I do with CO2 may have an effect, but it won't have it for many, many years. Because the carbon dioxide that we put in the atmosphere will stay there, much of it, for more than a thousand years. And yet, the shorter-lived things, uh, methane is the most important of which, but it's not the only one, actually have bigger impact on warming today than CO2 itself. And the fact that they're shorter-lived means that if what we do now can have an immediate effect. So being short-lived makes them more important, particularly if there are things we can do quickly to reduce them. And one of the problems with CO2 is that many of the things we need to do are very difficult, expensive, it's intrinsically tied up with our energy systems. And energy is so important for every aspect of life. Uh, rich countries you know, run on fossil energy. Poor countries want to use more fossil energy because they need to develop. We need to learn how to reduce these things, but it's not going to be simple or cheap. On the other hand, these shorter-lived things, uh, like methane, some people have called low-hanging fruit. That is, they're available for us now with relatively smaller costs. And so that's another argument for methane, is that we can do something in the shorter term, and it's easier than with CO2. So methane, I think of its lifetime in the atmosphere, which is about eight years. And that means that if you emit methane today, in, a, in eight years, you'll have a, roughly about a third of it left. That's relatively short-lived relative to some other greenhouse gases. And the reason that's exciting is if we were to make an effort to reduce methane emissions, that would be very quickly reflected in the atmosphere. 
Um, that methane isn't hanging around as long as, say, a molecule of nitrous oxide, another greenhouse gas. So if we make the effort to reduce methane emissions, that will have a quick impact on um, the radiative forcing of the atmosphere, and, and the thinking being that that can buy us some time as we try to get you know, carbon dioxide under control. Having said that, the more time that passes and we talk about it and we don't do it, we do run out of time um, for the other greenhouse gases. There are many things that people can do to reduce their emissions. If you eat further down on the food chain rather than animals, which have produced many greenhouse gases in, and used much energy in the process of growing that meat, um, you can actually make a bigger contribution in that way than just about anything. So that's, in terms of individual action, is perhaps the best thing you can do. We appreciate your taking this journey with us today and look forward to having you with us again next week as we continue to learn about the importance of reducing the output of shorter-lived greenhouse gases to rapidly cool our planet. Planet Earth, Our Loving Home, airs every Wednesday on Supreme Master Television, 